So season five is obviously my favorite and still the best to date because it was originally supposed to be the end of the show. The creator and showrunner, Eric Kripke, it didn't matter if the show was gonna get another season or was going to end at season five. He wanted out because he's already told his story and if it was going to be renewed, someone new was gonna come in. Yeah, that's kind of the story behind season five. You could clearly tell it was supposed to end. Nice wrapped up present and bold because like it just, the ending was so perfect and with season 15 the final seven episodes airing i'm not sure if the show can do that again there was multiple times well hold on could have ended at season two i wouldn't find ending in season two obviously season five was the original ending they could have ended at eight and eleven so a four separate times in the show's life cycle i would have been okay with the ending on four separate occasions five being the best so the premiere picked up right after the season four finale where there's a bright white light the brothers somehow get on a plane and then they, the plane starts to crash but it doesn't brothers are on a roll listening to the radio whole world's going crazy this is bright light you go to chuck chuck says that cassio was dead and then zachariah comes in basically to be more of an asshole as zachariah is an angel and slash villain you just love to hate the actor that plays him so well he says that lucifer is gonna need a vessel he's, lo he's looking for he's an angel after all and he also needs the boys for something they, they need him to find the vessels for michael and lucifer the sword and then dean does the whole sand thing they go away they go to a motel bobby shows up and that's where you know sam's like i started the apocalypse bobby is obviously kind of pissed off he's basically their father figure now while that's happening bobby turns out to be possessed by a demon and then guess who comes back your girl meg for like two and a half seasons she didn't come back but she's back now the new girl new body new meat suit and kill mozum because for meg she escapes bobby is crippled now because meg ordered the demon possessed bobby to kill him he stabs himself in somewhere in the stomach here to paralyze him so he's paralyzed and then zacharach you know gets them again says that dean is the michael sword he is the vessel he is chosen why is he chosen you know we'll find out later and then Cass is back and he just says Zachariah like turns out who, who saved him and they're sort of hinting towards to their father God and so while that's happening put something in their bones so that angels can't find them whatever it is it's in an extra in the next episode wait and then the episode ends with kind of the brother still drifting apart Dean can't really trust his brother because he chose a demon over his own brother episode two we have you know Rufus Ellen and Joe but, but they don't really matter they kind of do what's important is one of the horsemen we don't know it's a horseman yet but the first horseman that the brothers being is war i think there's a war phantom the sick guy and then death so we meet this guy he causes war there are hunters and people that are hunting each other for no reason because they have black eyes which means they're a demon and so they fix this problem they keep the ring i don't think they see it but they, they just keep the ring and then again there's still that weird sort of drifting apart between the brothers so sam decides to leave for a bit while dean st sticks with the impala go go and goes on while sam tries to go live somewhat a normal life again in episode three we get a lot of funny moments and just it's just really great and comedic and fun moments with and dean team up but yeah they go to a strip club they have some fun they find this archangel called Raphael, who explains to them why god is dead he is no longer here because he's letting his kids do whatever they want you know he's one of the archangels that's super powerful he's not important at all this season but he does explain like god doesn't care he's out we get to do whatever we want on the other hand sam tries to go live a normal life he works in a bar he tries to get with this girl this girl's interested he may or may not be interested and then these hunters cause these hunters to go help a case nearby and then they come back hearing weird things about sam and how he started the apocalypse so he threatens him to drink demon blood he you know knocks them out and he goes back to his hotel he sees like jess in his head first scene and then now in this scene turns out to be lucifer and the reason why lucifer is there talking to him because sam is his true vessel like with dean with michael is his true true vessel lucifer and sam they belong together it's his true vessel it's a brother versus brother fight michael and lucifer dean and sam episode four's the end is a fan favorite i can see why it's not my top favorite but it is up there where dean is brought into five years into the future we see chuck cast not being an angel no more because he lost his wing he meets a version of himself who's more aggressive and violent it reveals to him that uh sam said yes five years ago dean didn't but because they were drifting apart and they weren't together sam said yes so dean actually meets lucifer possessing sam and he's wearing his white suit yeah tells him the story of how he fall from heaven tells us his father god told him to love humans more than him and he admitted to his father that he can't because these humans humans are flawed murderers and for that he had michael cast them down to hell as dean does the punishment fit the crime and dean doesn't fall for this whole sympathy for the devil crap all he says is that he's just a monster but with a super large ego claims that this is never gonna happen however lucifer says to him this is destiny this will happen you both you and sam will say yes you guys won't kill each other but him and michael will and no matter what alterations that he does he or sam does they will always end up here changing channels is awesome that awesome opening 
all of the parodies they're doing to Japanese shows, cop shows, ads, American ads, all kind of ads. This is clearly another trickster episode. General Hospital like parody, I think. But yeah, the trickster gives them to another trick. This is their chance to ask someone as powerful as angels and archangels to help the aid the brothers in his eclipse. However, the trickster doesn't play ball, makes them do a lot more game. They think they kill him. He has Sam come the Impala cast earlier. Says he, he came in during the whole laughing bit. Claims that this is much way too much powerful than it should be. It's something else. Cast it away, and then they meet him again on Earth or Earth. Put holy fire! All right, no. Seems like he's he's always been an angel. Starts laughing, and then his laugh turns to a serious face. Turns out he's Gabriel, an archangel, one of the four archangels. Yeah, he's just kind of kind of sad that his brothers have to fight again. Cause that's basically what happened up in heaven, which is why he came down to Earth, had a face transplant, became the trickster, to the brothers ruined it. Basically, has to sit back, watch his brothers fight each other again, thanks to the brother. However, it sounds like there has to be a way to stop it. He's like, no, you just have to deal with it. Sort of explains to Sam, both Sam and Dean why they are the vessels. Michael, just like Dean, is loyal to an absent father, and Sam, who's Lucifer, is rebellious of daddy's plans. Gabriel doesn't care. Raphael kind of doesn't care as well. It's Michael and Lucifer. And he doesn't care whether heaven or hell wins. He wants all of this just to be over. He hates it. He's on neither side. And he keeps telling them the brothers to take responsibility. However, he is also not taking his own responsibility and confronting his own family. Episode 9 is the Supernatural Con episode, and it's only worth mentioning because of the end scene. Becky mentions to Sam that when Bella stole the quote from them, she gave it to the demon named Crowley, and Chuck just never happens to mention it. So then, in episode 10, they meet Crowley with the help of Joe and Ellen. Uh, Joe and Ellen are back, but they go to Crowley's mansion, they meet him, kills his own two demons, says that he wants to give the quote to them so that they can kill the devil. Crowley character is says that it's called insurance. He claims that once Lucifer gets first the apocalypse, he's eventually gonna get rid of his own demon. He just has a hunch. So he gives him the quote, gives him the bullets that Ruby made. I guess he knows how to make it as well. There's like an after party with uh, Ellen, Joe, Cass, Dean, Sam, and Bobby. There's still this relationship between Ellen and Joe that I don't care about. Whatever, they take a picture and then they go to his town and Cass is immediately lost. He's just away because he sees a bunch of Reapers, which is a trap for him, which is made by Lucifer. They talk it out and Meg is also in there as well. And then Meg meets uh, the rest of them. She has hellhounds with them. One of them gets Joe pretty badly. They stay in this, in this store. Joe says that she needs to stay behind, sacrifice herself. Ellen stays with her because they're family. Fall, uh, mother and daughter and once the hellhounds get close to them they blow up and they both die in a very sad and tragic way it, it was i remember the fandom losing their minds over this it was majority of the fans were not <laughs> were not happy i can see tell you that much i didn't mind it it's not like i didn't like them but i feel like their death was necessary but it was basically a, a showing of how confident sam and dean were and then sort of the start of losing their faith on how to kill the devil because of their deaths anyway while that happens they meet lucifer they both conf uh, confront him dean has a coach shoots him in the head but guess what it doesn't work he's one of the five things out there that just can't be killed with a gun so surprise surprise what a coincidence maybe Crowley set them up so while that's happening Lucifer is giving his speech to Sam on how much they're alike how much the brother called them a freak how much they didn't listen to, to their dads and whatnot and Sam tells them he's never gonna be like him he's never going to say yes but again this whole sort of destiny thing and no free will thing he's going to say yes Lucifer know how it will end what he's doing in this town is he, he's calling for death death is the the final horseman he, he doesn't want to play ball so Lucifer forces him to play ball, ties his hand behind his back so he can come up, and he does. They're back at Bobby's house, reminiscing about Joe and Ellen, and then they burn the photo in the fireplace. So in episode 13, Anna comes back. Not Anna as we know in season 4 because she was captured. This is a reformed Anna. Shows him Dean's dream and talks about some stuff. Goes to Castiel, says that Sam needs to die. You know, in order to just save the world, just kill Sam. Cass is like, nope, they're my friends. So she decides to go back in time to their parents. So then Cass does the same with Sam and Dean. However, when angels travel, especially when they they're not connected to heaven specifically with Cass and even Anna they like knock out for like a couple of hours at least so while that's happening they get to meet their parents Sam meets the parents for the first time there's a lot of crying and regrets coming so while that's happening Anna again tries to kill their parents their mother is a hunter their dad doesn't know what's going on so while they're finding Anna Sam does the whole hand sigil thing and then their father finds out and it's like a full-on family like argument Sam and Dean are in the back while father is driving the Impala and the mother's in front they go into this abandoned hunter house while they're there their father starts asking questions sam specifically says to his own father without realizing that uh, he now gets it he now knows why he does what he did he, he regretted not saying goodbye to him when, when he should have anna brings back uriel a younger version of uriel to kill the brothers and she kills sam she's about to kill the mother and then michael shows up possesses the father how is that possible michael and dean have to talk he explains the whole bloodline thing so while again this is michael's version of his speech on how much he took care of his brother and how much he loved him however he's going to kill his brother because it is the right thing to do because his father told him so and tells 
thinking that uh, Free Will is an illusion. He knows Sam and Nina are going to say yes. He has no choice. He has to say yes. Free Will is an illusion. You're going to say yes. Valentine episode. Which means there's love in the air. There's also the episode where Famine, the second horseman, is introduced and ultimately defeated. Where he makes people hungers come to life and they just abuse their hunger. Whether that's sex, drug, food, I don't know. Bl demon blood, for example. Sam's having that demon uh, blood back. Cass also eating hamburgers because Jimmy Novak is very fond of hamburgers. That is his addiction, basically. It's happening. They go meet Famine. They, they lock up Sam because he's he's addicted to it. But two demons come to him either way. He sucks all up the blood. He gets demon blood inside of him again. And then Dean and Cass they they go to they go confront Famine. Cass is all the beef and burgers he has. While Dean is like um, fronts him. Famine is like claims that uh, Dean has no soul. Cause he's already dead inside, and he is. And if Sam comes back, kills all the demons, lets all the demons uh, go inside Famine, and then kills the demons inside his body. That's how they defeat Famine and get his ring. In the end scene, Dean actually starts praying for God. He's actually asking for help. He doesn't know if he can do it no more. He's basically giving up. So in episode 15, it's only worth noting that the dead rises up because of the of death of the horseman. Sort of the side effect of the apocalypse happening. A big more poppy backstory and his wife coming back and whatnot. It's a, it's a cool episode. Just the dead rising up, slowly turning into zombies and going at people. But that, it's only worth mentioning because it is kind of a part of the apocalypse. Sort of a side effect of people rising up and dying. Episode 16 is an awesome episode. So we open with Sam and Dean getting shot by two other hunters. They both die. They are both granted salvation in heaven. How heaven works in the show is uh, people's memory that they find out are their best memories and then going along the road and then they change memories to opening doors. So that's how he finds Sam. While going through all these different memories, Sam's memories are being happy and then Dean's memories are about making other people happy. And so that's sort of toe to toe with when they go on this dark black road and it's Sam running away from his family, Billy and his family. However, they're, you know, they're, they're brothers, they're supposed to be together against Michael and Lucifer and whatnot. And they're sort of, the way they look at families can look different. Meanwhile, Zachariah is being a complete dick while they meet this uh, guy in a Luchador mask. Turns out to be Ash in his heaven world. He, he gives them the explanation. Tells them that Ellen and are dead. And then they meet Pamela. I remember her name. The psychic girl. Pamela. They say sorry to her. Everyone they know, they just get killed because of the brothers. And then Zachariah finds them again. Uses their own mother against them. And then Joshua shows up. Because uh, they're trying to find Joshua. Apparently he talks to God or God God talks to him. They go to up to the garden, I believe. They hear the, the sad news that um, God doesn't really care. Telling them to back off. He just doesn't think saving the apocalypse is his problem. Because he likes the thought of free will. Sort of setting back and enjoying. And this is just more of a setback for the brothers. Them losing more faith in trying to kill the devil and beat the devil. Same thing with Cass. He gives the amulet back to Dean. In the end scene, Dean sort of throws away. Leaning towards, you know, them losing hope. There's a scene in episode 17 where Dean goes back to Lisa. Lisa comes back. And then this is him saying goodbye to her. While still at the same time worrying her. Because, you know, he starts tearing up. Tell, tells her things like the world's going to end. He's going to be gone. He's not going to say, say why to Ben. Um, tells her that he's got her back up. So with some other people. So they can go and basically be safe. This scene. Because he's getting ready to say yes. So this is his goodbye for to Lisa. Episode 18 is their 100th episode. They didn't do anything special to it. Because everyone involved around the show thought it was when season 5 was going to be at the end. And it wasn't. There was two more seasons. This episode was really good. Because their brother Adam shows back up. Who showed up in the previous season. In episode 19. Where it wasn't him. They didn't get to know him. Because it was this creature. in like him. So they could feed off other family members. But in, in season 4. Episode 19. In that episode. They talk about how. Adam basically dodged a bullet. Yes he's dead. Which is tragic. But he dodged a bullet by not living. The way they, they live life. So when he comes back. And Castor brings him back. Because the angels have plans for him. To be Michael. However that's not possible. Because Dean is. And then Castor rebuttals back with. Maybe they're just moving on from him. Because Dean is so persistent. In saying no. That you know. There's a bloodline thing. John and his other kids. And, and Adam is. Just so happens to be the perfect person. To say yes. Because he doesn't know anything about this. So they're moving on from Dean. This is also a way. For one of the brothers. To get out. The writers. They basically found a way. For Dean to get out and go you know live a normal happy life while you know sam is sadly the ultimate sacrifice and they get back to zachariah complete dick love the guy he gets adam with all the burgers and beers until adam realizes that you know angels are dick zachariah has been playing them this whole damn time so while sam and dean get there dean actually says yes quotation mark yes and kills zachariah and then that's when michael comes down however while sam and dean they both leave adam is trapped behind the door assumingly michael possessing him episode 19 your boy gabriel's back with all of these other gods or pinch and gods under one roof where they basically kidnap Sam and Dean and you know talks like what the hell do they do because the, the apocalypse is coming and they're all gonna die eventually so do they kill the vessels or do they use them as bait and while they were discussing Gabriel shows up aka the trickster tells him what's going on he has this thing for this 
one chick, he gets caught, he dies, then not him really. He's hiding in the Impala. Again, he's the same person in episode 8, changing the channel, and he's telling Sam Dean, you know, playing their role, and he will play this role in this episode. So, one of them is goddamn snake, calls Lucifer, Lucifer kills that snake, he brutally murders all of these goddamn gods, like brutally. It's like off screen blood. He meets Sam and Dean, Gabriel enhance one of the brothers' porn video, Gabriel versus Lucifer, tells him all about how humans are basically better than them, while Lucifer's still going about how humanity is just a fuck up, and Gabriel tells him how dad was right. They were better than us, they always will, because Gabriel now fully realized his role. Um, he dies in confronting his family and he dies for it uh, seriously this time and then yeah it, even Lucifer's a bit sad by that because he, he did love him so while that's happening there's this erotic video of him with a bunch of ladies telling the brothers that they can't kill him kill Lucifer but they can shove his ass back down to the cage with four rings from the horsemen so yeah they already got two they just have pestilence and then death your boy Crowley's back in episode 20 he actually did not play the brothers 10 episodes earlier he actually thought the cult can kill the devil so because of that he lost his house his dog everything so he needs the brothers help and, and with that they meet one of Sam's old friends from high school who turned out to be a demon and sort of messed with his life throughout school. He introduced Jess to him. That's how they sort of tied that together. This episode's basically not filler, but somewhat still important. They get information out of this, I was about to say Chester, not Chester, out of this uh, demon, Sam's friend. And then they just kill him in the end. But yeah, they get some information on death and whatnot, I think. While that's happening in the end scene, Crowley confronts Robbie about making a deal and how he can restore his leg. But for that, he's, he's gotta sell his damn soul. So not gonna lie, they didn't have much to say about that previous episode, but episode 21, the penultimate episode, they introduced Death, and man, the music they used, the way he drove in that car, the way he gets out, the way he kills that guy by just swiping his shoulder, that was awesome, spooky to see. And that actor that they cast, he both looked scary, but also somewhat charming at the same time. He looked so little and weak, however, he is Death, he is the Grim Reaper, and he will kill you within a second. So, wow, that's awesome to see. Pestilence is in the, in the episode, he's the one horseman where they kind of run. I wish they probably did have time but because this was supposedly the last season they had packed everything in pestilence was just kind of combined with death both of them actually but yeah he just kind of grow he gets people sick and wanna cast his back from doing that ultimate sacrifice putting a sigil on his whole body sending all his angels away yeah th they defeat pestilence within like minutes it's super easy Dean so they decide to separate and go have Dean go to death while the rest of them go kills more demons and Bobby did make that deal it's a funny scene where he has a phone and Crowley and Bobby are kissing because that's how they had to make the deals in the show funny moment honestly the whole cast Bobby and Sam fighting the demons none of that's really important really is not important what's important is Dean meeting death their sort of conversation death willingly gives his ring to Dean so that he can be free from Lucifer's spell and not be bind by some childish archangel who's super powerful and mad as daddy you want he gets the ring willingly so we are finally here the original end to the show obviously it's not because we went for 15 goddamn seasons but we're here the best finale and best end the show could have possibly gotten in my opinion it opens up with the Impala, and throughout the episode, the Impala is shown, and man, that's just, this is great. I'm assuming this is Eric Kripke throwing in the fact that he chose the Impala because of his neighbor and whatnot. So while that's happening, by the way, Chuck is telling the story. Sam's like, yeah, time is now. He's going to say yes to the devil, and he does. And then Lucifer being Lucifer plays Dean, and thinking, playing Sam, and thinking he's gonna do that. He doesn't. Dean obviously gets worried. Well, actually, before they even go confront Lucifer, they say the group rides super early, by the way. I remember we're seeing them being like obviously this is not the end and then dean calls chuck for help tells him where is going to be the town of that where is michael versus Lu uh, lucifer is going to happen and it's in a s old uh, cemetery and so they get there michael and lucifer say, they start talking about why are they doing this why listen you know to god this is his doing he wanted the devil however michael is you know being a good little so you know being loyal and as an absent father and then lucifer is being the rebellious one but when they're about to start fighting dean comes in with rock of Ages, awesome song. Puts in that fucking cassette tape. Comes in with the Impala. Tells him what's going on with that guitar riff. Castillo has that, you know, iconic ass butt moment. Throws Holy Fire Molotov? Not Holy Fire. Holy or Molotov at Michael. Sends him away for a couple of minutes. And then, you know, Cass dies. He kills Cass. He, he too kills Bobby. Bobby chooses a cult. Snaps his goddamn neck. He's the shit out of Dean until his face is unrecognizable. And again, Dean is trying to get to Sam. It's very, you know, tragic moment. Still, while Dean is Dean, it's still a brother who's a brother fight it still technically happened even though it didn't but that's happening a glare basically it's kind of dumb but a glare gets into lucifer's and sam's eye and sam's uh, he's back in control got lucifer wh where he wants him to be and then michael comes back sam sets down the four rings tells him that michael needs to fight lucifer sam needs to get the hell out so then sam decides to jump in grabs both michael and adam into the hole and then they 
both go down the cage, closing up and preventing Armageddon from happening. Sam is the ultimate sacrifice, while Dean luckily and hopefully will live their normal apple pie life that they were discussing in the previous episode, I think. Oh, by the way, this is a beautiful moment, right? Him just standing next to him, Paul, panning up. Cassie goes back for some reason. That doesn't get explained until uh, later, which is very annoying. Bringing back Bobby, Chuck gives the narrative saying that Cass and Dean are in the, in the Impala, claims that why is God not saving Sam? Like, how, why does the story end like this? This is no happy ending, but it technically is. Sam is the ultimate sacrifice. One of the one of the birds had to do it, and then the other just had to go move on and live a happy life. And then Cass goes away as well. He goes to Lisa. You all get out. They have a family. I wish the shot would have ended with, you know, the house panning out, fading the black toy by Eric Kripke. Would have been beautiful. The end, Finn. But Sam is, is outside. He's in the light, close to whatever. Kind of ruins the moment. Kind of does. Not gonna lie. It ruins the finale. But I'm just gonna pretend that this happened in season six. But yeah, he somehow got out of the cage like hours later or whatever. Yeah, and, and then that's how it ends. I honestly think Sam would have been added on if this would have been the ending if CW didn't renew it. But since it got renewed, they needed to add just a little bit of a cliffhanger and Sam in there because they got renewed for six seasons. But yeah, either way, fantastic ending to a show. It would have been the ending. It would have been a great way just to wrap it up and just tie it on a bow because it was from seasons one through five. It was all meticulously planned out and things were intentionally happening to the brothers. And it's good, but also kind of bad that it went for 15 goddamn seasons. But you know, it, it, it is what it is. Um, and then Chuck just disappears he, after he, he's done writing the end. He, oh, this part, Eric, Eric Kripke saying to himself, How does he write a good ending? How does he leave on a good and satisfying note? He's basically Chuck. Chuck is he's writing down the end. Chuck just disappears. But yeah, what could have been if this was the ending? And I'm actually kind of curious with people who are new to the show if they think if they would have liked this ending because it is a sad and tragic ending. One of the brothers have to die basically and sacrifice themselves so so it's interesting to see what people are gonna think of it now season five is still and it's clearly the best season of the show it was originally supposed to end it's gonna be interesting for me to rewatch season six and onward see what i think about it now because i'm kind of heading into the unknown territory well I, i'm kind of not kind of know why i still like and kind of still don't like but kind of all of the in-between parts it's gonna be interesting to see if i like things more or less but let me know what you guys think of season five if you guys be watched it or not if you guys still like it it's because it's still the best and uh thank you for watching